For the last two years, Corporal Garthwaite has been working hard with his team at Headley Court to master his new bionic arm and fine-tune his hand movements. When I first had it on for the ever first time, I had it on a stand away from us and I was sat with me back to it. And it was saying, open your hand, I was opening my hand, but on a, on a table about 10 metres away, the hand was opening. So, I mean, for that to go across it, it was so weird in the mind. Andrew was injured by a rocket-propelled grenade on operations in Helmand in 2010. His entire right arm was severed by the explosion. At the time when I lost my arm, I, I thought oh, this was going to be it. Actually, I thought I was going to die when I was in the battlefield. But um, they took us back to Camp Bastion in Birmingham Hospital. And the care that I got was second to none. And the care that I get here at Headley Court is absolutely fantastic. I don't think you'd ever get that anywhere else. And it's just been a great and wonderful process. So how does it work? Corporal Garthwaite's arm was blown off at the shoulder. Surgeons rewired the nerve endings that would have run down to his hand into his chest. Then an electronic connection would link his chest muscles with his bionic arm. Today, he's able to perform tasks which were once simple, but which are much more fiddly with the new arm, like repotting plants and preparing a sandwich. After almost two years of rehabilitation, Andrew is now able to control his robotic arm using just his mind. It's a complex and demanding process, but it's made an immense difference to his quality of life, and it's hoped that in the future, other injured servicemen will be able to benefit from these advances in prosthetics. It was quite a, how could I put it, a humbling experience being able to sort of open my hand and close my hand again or move my elbow. But it's just, I never thought I'd be able to do it again. I was losing an arm, I thought, all right, I've lost an arm. I might get a cosmetic arm, nothing else. But now I've been proven wrong yet again by the Army and the MOD because now I'm riding a motorbike, I'm doing everything that I would normally do. Not just on this arm, but I've got other arms that I can use for different tasks. On Friday, Andrew will leave Headley Court for the last time. And by the end of the month, he plans to leave the army entirely and start a new life for himself with his family in the north of England. Joining me now is Dr Tim Jones, a consultant in rehabilitation medicine here at Headley Court. Um, Dr Jones, can you tell me how much does this new bionic arm of Andy's improve on the alternatives that were out there before? It makes an enormous difference to his ability to directly control his artificial arm and it, and it improves his dexterity by a huge margin. The old system required him to really go through a menu system to access any particular movement of his arm. With this system, if he thinks a movement, then it can happen directly in real time. It's much better. I think for a long time people have been fascinated by the idea of bionics and using your mind to control an artificial limb. It's quite fascinating to see that come to life. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, these are technical issues in, in linking your nervous system to, um, to, a, to a machine. Um, in this situation, you don't directly link it. It's just that you use pickups through the skin. But it's still functionally linked and makes a huge difference to its, its usefulness. And do you think um, these kind of innovations could be used more widely to benefit other injured servicemen? Well, absolutely. Um, there is, I think, at least one other a service, service man who has had a similar injury who is being put forward for this treatment. Um, and I think the benefits in terms of it, the increased dexterity and also the benefits in terms of reduced phantom pain are likely to be applicable to other people who have other nerve injuries. Where do you think this kind of technology might go in the future? This is one of the most intriguing things about the, the treatment. Uh, because Andy's nerves have been re reconnected to, to his chest wall, he has developed um, sensation of his hand on his chest wall. So if you touch his chest, he feels it in his hand. Uh, and this is absolutely fascinating because it, it raises the possibility that an artificial hand could be produced with a sensor which could be relayed to the chest wall and then he would be able to actually feel what is in the artificial hand. Now this hasn't happened yet, but I don't think there's any reason in principle why it shouldn't. And that would obviously make his hand much more useful.